Okay guys, we've all seen this cascade of sexual perversion that's coming to light out there and the responses of many of our favorite YouTube thinkers have. And that's basically, why would someone want to do this? Why do people do these evil things? And mostly what you see is, well, you know, <laughs> tribalism, or well, you know, not in a tribe, or all of these other things. Christianity has a different view on this, okay? We see that there's a, that humanity has a condition and that's called the sin nature. So I'm going to begin writing, or I'm going to begin by saying some of these Bible verses that kind of set it up for you, okay? So Christianity's take on this is Romans 3, 10 through 11 says, as it is written, there is no one righteous, not even one. There is no one who understands, no one who sees God. All have turned away. They have together all become worthless. There is no one who does good, not even one. In Christianity, we also talk about how the heart or our emotions are extremely deceitful. We're not to listen to them. We're not to use them to make decisions. Emotions play a different part. They have a different um, thing, but uh, to make decisions is not it. You don't use emotions to do that. You don't use emotions to decide what's real, things like that. So that's a, also a concept, just because our emotions are so changeable. Colossians 3, 5 says, Put to de their death, therefore, what is earthly in you, sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. All right. Galatians 5, 19 through 21 says, Now the works of the flesh are evident, sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. All right, so this is a very stern warning. These are the things that come naturally to us. We are naturally jealous. We are naturally sexually immoral. We naturally idolize things. People, it's a big problem, especially here in America, where we idolize people over God. All right. So I remember having a conversation with people before, and this idea was explained to me this way. Why do you help people? What makes you want to help them? And my answer was basically that it hurt me to see them hurting. So I wanted them to stop hurting so I would stop hurting. <laughs> I didn't do it because they were hurting and they're human, they're human too and so I should help them. I, don't, I didn't do it because they don't deserve to or because it isn't right for those people to be hurt, but because it hurts me. When it didn't hurt me anymore, I didn't care about the other pain people are in. And you can see this played out also. For example, if something happens in Utah, eh, we all care a bit more. If it happens in Russia, eh, we care a bit less. Why? We can't feel that pain as much. So it's a selfish thing. We help people for selfish, selfish reasons. It's not because we're so good. It's because we're hurting and we see other people saying they're hurting, so we just all want to not hurt anymore, and so we help people. If you help someone without you hurting, then that is truly an unselfish thing. But typically speaking, unless you can feel this person's pain and you're hurting too, you don't help people. Typically speaking, that's just how people are. So, and that is what the Bible covers. We are selfish, where we're not that's the that's the human nature our human natural nature self is to be selfish so christianity says that we can combat this natural way that we are we can combat this will by turning to jesus when he calls and i am once someone who believes that jesus calls to us our whole life our whole life he sends people our whole life he 
pro, you know, he sends people, he tries to talk to you, he does whatever he can to try and get your attention your whole life. So if you answer that call and you agree to just basically, um, basically what you're doing is you're accepting reality. That's how I look at it. You agree to accept the, accept the reality that you have a sin nature, Jesus came here to save you from yourself and save the world from it all, then you can be with him once you're, once you die. If not, you can't. So that's, that's like basically what it is, how I understand it. So when it comes back to the sin nature, Christians are saddened by these things that happen. We don't want them to happen. They're not right and they should never be supported. But I can't say I've been around any Christians who say they're surprised by it because we understand that this is the nature of a human being to be evil, to, to do wrong, to want to do wrong. I know that when I was a kid, the only reason I didn't do something that was wrong, like stealing or something like that, was because I would get caught. And if I, if I didn't get caught or if I knew I would not get caught, I would steal or I would lie or I would do all these things. It was, it came naturally to me. I was good at it, that kind of stuff. You see what I'm saying? So overall, Christianity understands that we are naturally evil. There have been some scientific examples of this as well that you can look up. Uh, I can't remember the name of the study, but I will put it in the comments or in the description once I find it again. So basically, 1 Peter 2.24 says, He bore he himself bore our sins in his body on the tree that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. Romans 6.6 6 says, We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. Jesus came to not only save the world to himself or what what do they call it ah brain fart again okay so basically jesus came to save us from ourselves we are naturally <clears throat> excuse me we are naturally sinful and he's come to take that sin and help us wrangle it in and to not do it anymore and we need that we need that help that power behind it galatians 2 20 says i have been crucified with christ it is no longer i who live but christ who lives in me in the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. When, as a Christian, I look at the cross, I look at that just the same way as I look at like a soldier who died to protect me. Jesus died to protect me, and then he rose again and came back to help me live my life. It would be as if a service member died and then came back and came to your house and was like, Hey, and you know this person died for you, say, for example. And then came back to your house and said, hey, here's a great way to start a business. Or here's a great way to live your life so that you have a better one. Would you listen to that person? I think most people would because they'd have some sort of idea of like, hey, you sacrificed for me. So for me as a Christian, this is what I understand the Bible to be saying, okay, is, is that he sacrificed himself for me for my brothers, for my sisters, for my dad, my mom, everyone, to be better, to do better, and to be sacrificial ourselves. And we can't do that. We won't do that. We have a, a sin nature that defies that idea. So the last one, the last two, sorry, is Romans 13, 14, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. Alright, so Christianity, or, or I'll just say it this way, I as a Christian, whenever I look at things like Harvey Weinstein, terrorists, leftists, all of, this, all of these evil things that happen, I understand that that's the nature of humanity. And though I am sickened, appalled, saddened, sometimes even angered by it, I understand why it happens. It's no longer a thing that I have to sit and wonder about. I know. And Christianity has that answer. Most other religions don't. They say it has to do with like, well, because you want things or you have desires or struggles or something. No, I mean, you could be completely rich and desire nothing. 
because you have everything and you still can be an evil bastard. <laughs> so, or you can be poor and desire nothing and still be an evil bastard. Like it doesn't even, it, you can have everything you want slash need and still be evil. So I, I don't think that that can really be the answer. For me, I found this answer here in the Bible at Christianity. When you see these things, guys, as a Christian, if you're a Christian watching this, pray for people. Pray for them. I know there's been a big deal out here this time around with uh, the Las Vegas shooting where people were saying, well, if prayers worked, they wouldn't have gotten shot in the first place, etc. like that. That's not particularly true. But it doesn't matter what they say. Prayer works. I've seen it work in my life. I've seen other people at work in other people's life. I just got told a story yesterday about how a fellow Christian prayed with another Christian for this lady who's not saved to help her in her life. And the next day, three things just lined up for her, like immediately. So prayer works, guys. It works all the time. It works every day. Let's pray. And then, as you pray, ask God what you can do. Because everyone sees what people do. Everyone is encouraged by actions. And the Bible encourages us to not only pray, but to be an active force in the world. And that is also how you change minds, how you change hearts. This guy who shot up all these people in Las Vegas, I can't remember his name, he... It sounds like, from what I read and all the information I could find, it doesn't sound like he had a great support system. I'm sure he had friends, but it didn't sound like he had friends that were would really question him on what he's doing. It doesn't sound like he had family that was getting involved with him to question what he was doing. Uh, it doesn't sound like he had that kind of thing. We need to be doing that as Christians. We need to be involved in people's lives that way. Not only other Christians' lives, but other people who aren't saved. Because they don't have the Holy Spirit to help them battle this evil that's inside of us. And that's all I wanted to say, guys. I'm saddened by all of this. I, As I look out on this world and I see all this evil, I pray for the world. I pray for my country. I pray for people to turn back to God. Because he's really the only way that we're ever going to look at our other fellow human beings and say, that's a fellow human being, I should care. I know it was for me, and that's I, where I think I'm going to wrap this video up. I'm sorry it was a little, uh, a little rambly, that's just how I talk. <laughs> so until next time, guys, I will see you later. I hope you are all having a wonderful day, and be blessed.